Good afternoon and welcome to LVS Perspectives number 29. And today we're going to be talking about building resilience and a couple of the initiatives that we've brought into LVS for this, acad this academic year 2021-2022. So today I'll be joined by Louise from To Be Resilient and Steve from Kids MBA. So we're going to start off by um, talking about Kids MBA and I'm going to pass over to Steve from Kids MBA and also Laura Collins, who's our school person who has been coordinating this and developing the initiative. So good morning, or I should say good afternoon, Steve and Laura, are you there? Yes, yes. Good, good, good afternoon, afternoon Christine. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for the introduction. introduction. Um, um, yeah, my, my name is Steve Smith. I'm Deputy, Deputy Chief Executive, Chief Executive at, at uh, ABE, ABE. Um, and the Kids and MBA is, is, is one of our, our one of our programs. programs. Um, I've got a presentation that I'm going to run through, um, if that's okay. Um, but just wanted to start by saying how excited uh, we are at ABE about the, the partnership with, with LBS Ascot and very much looking forward to the impact um, it, it, it can deliver and, and I'm sure will deliver. So, um, and there's the slide. So um, just by way of beginning, maybe just a brief bit of introduction about ABE. So ABE stands for Advancing Business Education. We are a not-for-profit skills development and awarding body. Uh, we're domiciled in the UK. Our headquarters are in London and we've been operating since 1973. We do work globally, however, so we work currently in about 37 different countries around the world, uh, particularly Commonwealth countries where we have a strong footprint. Um, and we also specialize in working in sort of global South economies and emerging economies around the world. Um, in terms of curriculum, we are quite niche and we specialize fundamentally in business management and entrepreneurship, education and skills development. Um, so next slide, please, if that's OK. Kids MBA is a program for schools which is fundamentally about entrepreneurship. And, and the genesis of Kids MBA was really through a lot of the thought leadership work that we do as an organisation globally. Uh, we work with a lot of governments around the world at, at national system level. Um, we do a lot of sort of thought leadership work uh, with different organisations, including the Commonwealth Secretariat. So. We're going to be speaking at the next Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting at the Business Forum to, to Commonwealth leaders around the importance of entrepreneurial skills development in schools. And, and through a lot of the work we were doing, um, a lot of the research in particular, it became very clear to us that in a very fast changing economic landscape, that if countries were serious about building macro level entrepreneurship capability, that we collectively had to start um, focusing on developing that knowledge and, and those entrepreneurial skills earlier on in learning journeys in, in younger children than perhaps what, what's been done previously. Um, and, and I guess that was the genesis of, of, um, of, of Kids MBA and, and how it started. So next slide, please, if that's okay. So we're now working with many, many schools around the world, international schools, uh, international schools, independent schools, state schools in, in many different countries. Um, and, and since January, we've, we're sort of working with a, a group of first mover schools in the UK now as well, particularly in the independent sector and LVS Ascot is obviously one of those schools. Um, I guess the overarching synergy that's showed by all of them or, or shared by all of them is this vision around sort of what type of curriculum is required you know, in terms of what is fit for purpose for a, for a 21st century offer. Um, I, you know, I think it's fair to say that the sort of traditional pathways to employment are, are rapidly changing. Things are being disrupted through Industry 4.0, now post-COVID, post-Brexit. So, you know, we certainly are passionate and, and feel that it's clear that sort of SMEs and entrepreneurship are going to play a much bigger part of the future economic landscape, both in the UK and globally. And, and that's really, you know, I, I guess the schools that are, that are working with us with Ken's, Kids MBA share that vision. It's around a vision of the fact that entrepreneurship skills development and business, business skills are, are as important as any other part of the curriculum in terms of developing sort of very rounded, practical um, global citizens. Um, next slide, please, if that's okay. Uh, I think the other aspect that the, that the schools that are, that are working with us with Kids MBA, including LVS Ascot, um, share is this sense of global community. So 
when we developed Kids MBA, um, we were very, very passionate that we wanted a pro- something, uh, sort of a model that went beyond the product itself, beyond the nuts and bolts of the program. And this sort of global community was something that we were really, really keen to, to build out with Kids MBA. And it's something that's really got some real traction now and, and really started to develop as we get more and more schools working with us around the world, this sort of global Kids MBA community. Um, and it's really about a sort of a cultural exchange as well as uh, as well as developing the fundamental skills and knowledge in this space. It's around, you know, the you know linking schools around the world, often from very different socioeconomic context. It's it's around that exchange of ideas, around looking at social entrepreneurship, and and we we do a lot. We, we're doing a lot this year in particular to build on this global community. So we're running sort of different competitions. One is called Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Uh, we're running different initiatives under the Kids MBA banner, all designed to sort of provide this linkage between like a school like LVS Ascot in, in sort of London and, and a school, you know, schools in Caribbean and Southeast Asia and, and, and Africa and other parts of the world where we work with Kids MBA, which I think is a really, really exciting aspect of, of the program and the model and, and, and something I, I know that LVS were, were really excited about, you know, exploring further as well. Next slide, please. Kids MBA, as discussed, it, obviously it, it, it looks at developing entrepreneurship and business skills. And, and I think we feel passionate that by delivering Kids MBA to all children, you know, at that sort of lower middle secondary age range, it, it, it provides a fantastic grounding and a fantastic base for, for all of them. Now, some students will get a real passion for, for this and they'll go on to want to do further business studies either you know GCSE or A level or university S- some will go on and definitely want to be an entrepreneur you know I'm sure there's the next Jeff Bezos just you know sitting there somewhere right now just you know becoming engaged through kids MBA and that's great but even if you're a young person that goes on to want to be a teacher or a lawyer or a doctor there's the skills and knowledge that kids MBA develop you know we feel are just as important for those for those pathways, you know, entrepreneurship is a phrase that is becoming more more topical. And, and certainly, you know, you know, I work in the corporate world, and and certainly when we are employing people, we are looking for you know financial literacy and the ability to think outside the box and the ability to be pragmatic and and manage projects and all the sort of skills that you know that entrepreneurial mindset, um, which whether you actually go on to be an entrepreneur or or, or go into another sort of curriculum or career pathway is equally important so we feel kids mba gives value and adds benefit to to all children and we're passionate about accessibility and giving as many children around the world the opportunity to participate in the program as possible next slide please if that's okay Um, in terms of delivery so um, we we have developed the program where the school so lvs can just take the program um, and they can just deliver it as we provide it. Um, it's it's very hands-on and engaging. So there's a lot of there's a lot of role play, a lot of games, uh, a lot of you know room for group work and discussion. The teacher effectively acts as a facilitator um, in terms of the in terms of the lessons. Um, but it is designed to be you know delivered in the classroom setting. We we made a very conscious decision early on that we didn't want it to be a an online program you know where someone just puts headphones on and clicks through slides that's that's not what we wanted with this because of the nature of of that sort of engaging part of of the course it's it's designed to be done in a in a sort of a physical classroom environment obviously with covid that wasn't possible last year so we did have remote and there is a remote version available but certainly now hopefully things are back sort of normalizing again you know we see the real value in with kids mba and being delivered in that in that classroom setting which certainly is how lvs um are are setting out to deliver it as well um so so yeah great next slide please in terms of the content um you can see there that there's 16 modules that make up part of kids mba each one's around 45 minutes to an hour's teaching time and again, I think one of the real beauties of Kids MBA is, is we didn't want to shy away, although it's done in a very fun, engaging, hands-on, collaborative way, we didn't want to shy away from the really strong concepts that, that the program is designed to address. Um, you know, we didn't want to sort of dumb it down from that respect. So I, I think if you can see 
the breadth of, of what's covered in the program, you know, from copyright to tax to, to marketing. There, there's a lot of really quite meaty concepts there that, that the children really, you know, embrace and develop their skills and knowledge around. But again, done in a way that sort of engages them and, and empowers them and enthusiasms them to, to sort of really, you know, really attack, attack the subject matter. So, so yeah, that's the structure and the content. Next slide, if possible. As an awarding body, um, we have the ability, you know, one of our one of our bread and butter, I guess, offerings is, is credentialing. So um, there's a credential attached to Kids MBA in the form of a, a sort of a certificate, um, which again, I think is really important. I, I think, you know, the, the fact that children can work towards something with this program that is tangible, which they can achieve, um, which they can take away from them. And, you know, we're doing a lot of work at the moment, actually globally around this whole credentialing framework what does 21st century credentialing look like for schools and and you know this whole aspect about building a digital wallet and, and building a, a credentialing portfolio um you know i think again kids mba really fits into that whole model as well and and so all the children that go through the program will receive the credential um and in terms of assessment it's formative so it's just ongoing throughout there's different um, places during the program where where skills and knowledge can be checked by by, by the teaching staff um, and and everything with the program dovetails towards the final module which is a shark tank or dragon's den activity and that's really really cool so schools do incredible things with that they normally take a half a day they bring in parents and and business leaders from the community and and the kids essentially pitch their their business ideas um, and they take all the skills and knowledge that they've learned throughout the, the kids MBA modules and they sort of funnels into that final Dragon's Den sort of exercise, which is, again, really, really empowering and, and fantastic for not just the children, but for the whole school community and, and all the stakeholders as well. Next slide, if that's possible. And that's it, really. I just wanted to finish by before we go on to some questions. And I, and I know Laura probably has a few things she wanted to, to bring up with me, but just wanted to say again that you know we're really really looking forward to you know to the partnership with with LVS it, it, it was really clear through conversation with Laura and Christine that there was a really there was a shared a strong shared vision in terms of what LVS Ascot want to do in this space which really lined up and aligned very strongly with the work that AB is doing globally with kids MBA so we're just super excited about supporting LVS Ascot and, you know, all the students there and, and everyone involved really over the next six to 12 months as we get the program rolling out. And we certainly view this as a long term and sustainable collaboration, um, which is going to deliver real impact. So, um, again, yeah, thank you for your time and, and happy to take some questions now or, or, or whatever, whatever you want to do, Laura. Uh, thanks, Steve. Um, I think, you know, for, from our point of view, it's, it's brilliant. It's a really uh, exciting um, modules that we've got um, coming up. Uh, we're running it in our LVS1 programme on a Tuesday morning with our year eights. Um, and so far, we've introduced them to the, the concept and what they're going to be learning. And some of them have come up with some ideas already um, about the businesses that they want to kind of um, implement. So it's fantastic because they're really, really excited as well. And I think working with Steve, and ABE, I think the kids are going to really get some really good, strong skills out of this, which, again, are going to be able to transfer throughout um, their life and, and future careers as well. So it's really good, really exciting. Thanks, Laura. And, and thanks, Steve. So if, if you've got any questions for Steve or indeed Louise, Laura or myself, please send them through. And at the end of the session, when we finish today, then there's also time for some general questions about school life. So if you've got them, please send them through and we'll ask, answer those at the end. So thanks, Steve. Um, hopefully you can stay with us just in case we get some questions. Really? But yeah, we are really excited about it. It's a fabulous initiative. Um, it's something that, you know, we've, we've researched an awful lot about the work that you do. And it's, it's really good stuff. And it does actually build our young children up to be more resilient in the workplace as they progress through the school and into their careers after school and university. Um, and we just had a parent come through saying, you know, this is this looks great. It's an amazing initiative. Yeah, we're really pleased, really excited. Yes, yeah, so that's great. Yeah. Great feedback okay. as well, so thank you. Brilliant. So if you can stay with us, that'd be great. Course, and then we'll move on to uh, Louise from To Be Resilient. So um, James, would you like to, if you're there, James, would you like to um, introduce Louise to us? 
Um, <clears throat> uh, yes, certainly. First of all, if I could say, just say a couple of words behind the impetus that we have behind engaging um, with this as well. Um, I, I'm not really one of those people that really begins things with these grandiose quotes, but actually this is one that has really gone with me throughout my life um, in terms of, of being a linguist. So Ludwig Wittgenstein said that the limits of my language are the limits of my world. And the way that really relates to the well-being um, side that, that I deal with on a daily basis is that what children cannot understand or articulate effectively it will show up in different ways and often this will be in their behavioral reaction um, to events that are going on around them um, and and also um, something that I keep on the wall just in front of me here is that when little people are overwhelmed by big emotions it's our job to share our calm and not join in their chaos which is something that is really important um, uh, certainly for, for us as teachers to remember as well but I suppose as parents too um, and so uh, so how do we do all this and how do we bring this together? And so we need to develop a common area of understanding about emotional needs. And in order to do that, we need to develop the language or teach the language associated with it. And so um, that is actually something that this um, to be resilient program uh, really aims uh, to achieve. There was some excellent feedback that we had from our little taster course uh, uh, tutor groups that, that did it last year. Um, and so, um, so yes, so both as a linguist and head of wellbeing, um, fully behind it. And so, um, Louise Gambler from the organisation, um, over to you with thanks. Wow, what can I say? Thank you for such a lovely introduction. And wow, Steve, I'm loving the look of the uh, MBA as well. So. Following on from that, I think they'll work really, really well together. So it's lovely to see two separate uh, programs coming in. So I'm just going to share my screen and just share some slides, ever so quick slides with you. Um, or give you a little bit about us. So <clears throat> we've been going for just over a decade, although it feels a little bit longer than that because we've done so much research beforehand and everything. Uh, what we're really proud about from the Resilience Development Company is these awards we are award winning and I just love at this point just to turn around it's my one of my favorite things to say is that we actually beat Google and I find that just amazing especially since there's only four of us there's four directors in the company uh, and we all come from very very different backgrounds and I think that's what brings the company so to life uh, we've got psychology and counseling we've got uh, somebody from the film industry we've got industry at director level and we've also got elite military um, so you can all have a little guess to find out which one I am if you're going to pick elite military, I'll be really, really flattered, but I'm not. I'm the one that's from the film industry. Uh, but with us, a, such a different, diverse set of us that bring all in. And we've all got passion for everything that is about resilience. Um, um, what do we do? Well, we work from scale. We work really high up at scale from the NHS, FTSE 100s, government. Uh, we work in technology, global banks. Uh, and we've trained thousands and thousands of people. And the one thing that they all have in common is they all kept saying to us, this should be taught in schools. This should definitely be taught in schools. So we took their advice. Yeah, we're not educators, we're resilience specialists. We went out, we did our full nine week program that has over 65 skills and we did it face to face and it was brilliant. We did it in very different extreme schools um, and with some great, great response. We trained the to our students, we trained the parents and we trained the teachers in these secondary schools that we chose. Uh, and that's really where Start to Be Resilient, the digital program came from. It comes from the exact same content that we teach to those FTSE 100s and to government and everywhere. Uh, the same ones that we went into the schools and did face to face. We've just made it a little bit smaller. We've made it more accessible with 12 scales that have been chosen specifically for each of the different topics that we go through. Um, I like to get one thing very, very clear right in the beginning, and it's a little bit about what resilience isn't. Uh, lots of people don't go on about what resilience is, um, but it isn't about fixing people. It definitely isn't. Uh, and most of the time, it's about going from good to great, uh, just enabling people to be able to thrive rather than just survive in the environments that they're in. It's about helping them take responsibility and accountability uh, for their own emotional, social and mental resilience. Uh, and we do this all the way through any of our programs uh, by using a skills based approach. Uh, we take a lot of knowledge. We take a lot of scientific proving. We take um, all different things from CBT, you name it. We've looked at it, the theory behind resilient, uh, behind leadership. And we've just taken it down very simple put it into a skill so you can go out and use it. So it's practical um, and it's easily shared. That's the real, real beauty. The, the simplicity and the ability to be able to share it is actually one of the, the, the best things about it. 
but I just like to say that this this program is an intro. It's an introduction to resilience. It's not a silver bullet. It's not going to fix everything. But what it will do is it will help you as parents be able to speak the same language, a common language that the teachers will be uh, speaking, as well as the students, your children. So if I just quickly move on to the next slide, what I'm going to quickly go through is going to go through the 12 skills, how you can access it. I'm going to quickly do a skill as long as I've got time and then just any further info and support that you can get from us. So it is available on all digital platforms. Yeah, from your iPad, your phone, your computer. It can be accessed absolutely any way that you want to. The choice is completely yours. The 12 skills, as I said before, are practical and easy to use. Uh, and we have trained thousands of parents, and I personally have trained them as well. And they all say the skills have helped not only themselves as people and as professionals, um, but also as parents. And it's helped them better help their children. Yeah, these skills are designed as an introduction to just be able to get that resilience going. Um, we, as I said before, we do do a whole nine week program that's got 14 hours of it that is actually uh, recognized by the CMI. It's one of the very first programs of its type for teenagers to be recognized as that. But that's the full program. The skills that you're going to be getting are 12 essential ones hand picked by us that are broken down into three sections. You've got banish stress build confidence, and boost your brain power. Each topic has skills that are specifically linked to help students resiliently build themselves up in those, those three areas. Um, the design of the platform allows for these skills not only to be taught in the school uh, by the teachers. I'm definitely there with, with um, Steve on that. It was something that we wanted the teachers to be able to do. We'd love to be face to face with each and every one student, but it's just not possible but for the school to be able to take it on in the classroom environment. But it also allows for parents to access, access exactly the same thing that your children are accessing. So you can do it at home, giving the chance for that more triangulated approach for teachers, students and parents, all to be speaking the same language and using the skills to enable them to help better support their children in those amazing areas of lowering their stress, navigating conflict and difficult conversation, but also giving parents some proactive skills that will help their children boost their confidence and performance with school, but also at home. Each of the skills, each of the skills uh, is a, a video. It's a video. It's a video of the lovely Chantelle that you can see there. Uh, they thought that it would be better if the students had a younger model. How rude rather than myself um, but it's a video of the wonderful Chantelle talking through the scale and then afterwards they have an interactive worksheet yeah your school LVS Ascot will be doing one skill every three weeks and then in those three weeks it'll be about um, embedding using um, challenging the, the, the skills the whole way so that's one pdf and one video for each of the skills they're about 10 to 15 minutes long so your children will be doing the worksheets at school, although it'd be really great if you can discuss it with them at, at home, perhaps either go through them with, it, with each other, do it together. It's just how it fits into your home life. But it is definitely, definitely worth your while going on, going through, watching the video, understanding what they're going through. So you can have those brilliant conversations with them at the end. Each, each student will receive a, a graduation certificate from Start to Be Resilient. So that's something that they can pop in their CVs, they could put it on, uh, in, their, in their folders, whatever. And those will be issued out to the students. Now let's quickly look at signing in, just how easy it is. Um, you will be sent in an email, a link through to our website, yeah, where you'll instantly go through. Your child will have your, stu and the student will have separate sign in to yours but it is exactly the same platform. And we did that specifically so that we could, we could get you to see exactly what your child sees. Uh, you'll be given the web, web address to go through, but you'll also, so don't panic, be given one of these step-by-step -step signing into your resource guide, where it'll literally take you through every single step from your coupon that will take you through or getting it into your basket all the way through to starting you off. So I think I've got like two minutes. I'm going to quickly... Let me show you one of the skills, uh, one of the skills that your, your children will learn. This one's catastrophizing. Uh, it's one of my favorite skills because I am a huge, and you'll learn this word as you go through the program, ruminator. 
and my catastrophizing does get out of hand. So it's great for me, but it's great for your kids as well. So we start off with uh, Chantal, have, they'll have a video of Chantal. You lucky people have got me doing it today. Uh, but we start off with a little description. I talk about having my iPhone in the back of my jeans pockets and having to go to the loo. And I go in and I pull my jeans down and my phone goes down the toilet. Yet yeah, instantly I start off on catastrophic thinking. So we ask them to go, what is the worst thing that can happen? And when we ask them to do this, we ask them to blow it up into really outrageous thinking, the absolute worst, and then keep asking yourself, and then what? And going one step further, and then what? One step further. Uh, I always say to people, bring humor in. Humor is absolutely amazing. So what's the worst that can happen? Okay, so I put my hand down the toilet, uh, and then what? Uh, I haven't flushed. And then what? Uh, I get a slight shock and I shoot back. And then what? Um, I crack my head open on the bath. And then what? Um, and then I uh, kick the U-bend on the toilet. And then what? Oh, I've got dirty water and all sorts of stuff coming out all over me. OK. And then what? It seeps into the joist, the ceiling and the ceiling collapses. OK. And then what? Uh, and then I scream. And as I go down, I'm out knocked unconscious and the ambulance and the fire department turn up. And then what? Uh, and then my landlord comes along and I haven't paid my insurance. And then what? And then I get thrown out of my house and I have to live in a car. And then what? And then my infection gets in my head, gets infected. And then what? And then I die. That's the very worst thing that's going to happen. And do you know what the brain does? It goes, that's really bad, but that's not going to happen. And then we ask them to go, what's the best outcome? The very best outcome. OK, so I drop my phone down the toilet. It doesn't get completely wet. I pick it up. Uh, and uh, I start to try and dry it off. It's touchscreen. So as I'm touching it, I'm dialing a number uh, and I dial through to, and I get through to Ryan Reynolds. Uh, and then what? Uh, and then he says, oh, you're the thousandth caller and you've won the competition. And then what? And he says, all you, your family and everybody can come on a massive cruise with me and all my producers. Okay, and then what? Uh, and then I get talking to somebody and they go, I love your start to be resilient. And then what? They give me my own TV channel. And then what? And then I become as big as Oprah Winfrey and have my own channel. And everybody comes and works for me. And everybody gets resilience free all over the world. And then what? And we all live happily ever after. What does my brain do? It goes, oh, that's brilliant. I don't think that's going to happen. And then we go, what's the most likely? Most likely is I'm going to pick my phone up. I'm going to put it in rice or cat litter and leave it for 24 or 48 hours. And it will work or it won't. And if it doesn't work, I'll have to use the big one. Yeah. And we say to them, start planning for the most likely. Your brain will settle. It's gone through every stage of rumination to the worst. Yeah. Worst case thinking. It's gone all the way through to it, all the way through to the best. And now it's quite happy to settle on the most likely. And now you can plan for it. You can plan and become proactive and start doing it. So they'll have a video explaining all that, getting them all, all excited. We get them to have goes at doing it. And then we will hand them on to a PDF, just like this one an interactive one that the teachers will either print out or they'll do them online, but they'll gather this information in. Yeah. Three great things you can see that you, you catastrophize about that. That knowledge is like gold dust to be able to get it out of the students. And that we do that the whole way through. You put them in a very safe environment, ask them to think about their thinking, ask them to think about what is going on in their head. And we get a little insight into them. As you can see, there's a skill four out of the 12. So as we said before, please try and use them at home with them. Yeah. Start asking them if they're catastrophizing. Just ask them what's the worst thing that's going to happen. Uh, sit down with them. Start talking about all the skills. Uh, the more you can learn to use the same language and ask the same questions and help each other out. Yes, I did say help each other out. As I am absolutely 110% sure there's going to be some point where you'll start on your catastrophizing. And a little voice will say next to you, what's the worst thing that can happen? I can guarantee you, you'll start laughing. And out the wealth of babes, absolutely 110% it all comes. Uh, you can find out more from us at the www.resiliencetraining.co.uk. We're on Facebook, Resilience Development Company, Twitter at Res Resilience Dev Co or LinkedIn. And um, we've got blogs and everything. I have got a slide for any more questions. But I think we're going to be doing that a little bit later on. So I'm going to stop sharing. And I think I've gone over my 10 minutes I'm really sorry. It went really quick. Blah, 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 blah. Off I went. Uh, but I think it's going to be brilliant. We are just like Steve. We are just so excited to start off with um, LVS Ascot. You guys have been absolutely brilliant. I cannot wait to see the results that you get coming through.
That's great. James, over to you. Um, so yes, so um, uh, we've we've done two sessions so far uh, this academic year uh, on that. A lot of that's been taken up with kind of sorting out uh, technical issues in terms of signing up and things like that. So when it's in there, but what will happen after that ultimately is that teachers very much take a role in in the um, delivery uh, of the program, and the children are just doing some sort of like a self reflection uh, questionnaire at the beginning. Um, there have there was some excellent feedback um, from this course last year, where actually the children straight away started started to use the language that they had been taught by their tutor. So they were becoming much more in tune with the way they were feeling, the way they were responding to things. And particularly what you were saying there, Louise, about, you know, what is the worst thing that can happen? Some of the, you know, and you would start saying this to children, what's the worst thing that is going to happen? And they kind of, and they went, oh, I know, I need to think of what's likely. And, you know, and that's the whole point. You can have, you have the same language with the children, you have the same, um, you're reinforcing what they're seeing in class and they're starting you know to get the message through and that's why we think it's 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 so important um obviously we're trying to hit all three key stage three year groups in one go this year and then we'll be doing this with year seven going forward so really um so yeah, yeah very excited with it uh, it's a good job that we've got the whole year to do it because actually it will be it will be something that you know we can keep tapping into uh, with regards to the children um so so yes i'm really um, excited with it um if, if i could just ask you a quick question um actually louise um i think i, I can't i don't think you mentioned it in the presentation there but you said it before i think actually you might have done that this is about you, know, you got it in through the business uh, from the business world um, and you said there were some adaptations, you know, what adaptations did you have to make in terms of switch from the business to the school environment? Sort of what were your main challenges there? Very minimal, to tell you the truth, James. Very, very minimal. We changed a few of the slides. Rather than it being a boardroom, we had a classroom. Uh, they are in the exact same skills that we teach in the exact same way. We change a little bit of the, the content. That's all about just so that the, the, the students can uh, can sort of like, you know, sort of see themselves in it. Apart from that, it's exactly the same, exactly the same. We just made it a little bit. Obviously, when we're face to face, it goes on a little bit longer. But we decided to do the videos which just explain it rather than a workbook. And, and there we were. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, what I love about training with uh, or going in face to face when I used to with students is they get it. They get it so much quicker than us adults sometimes. They're just straight on it. And I'm sure, James, you've had some of them coming back to you. Are you ruminating, sir? Have you had that one yet? I remember when the first one said that to me, that some of the IT didn't work well when I was in the room with them. And one of the lads at the back of the room just turned around and said, don't ruminate, miss. I'm sure it would be fine. There's no need to cast catastrophize. And I just thought, well, my job's done. I'd always support a child saying that to me, quite brave of them, really. Um, <laughs> quite brave of them, really. Um, no, but it is very good because obviously from being on the head of wellbeing side and also being a class teacher, you know, you, you see it, you see the children in different contexts um, all, all the time. Um, and actually um, you're saying that as well, that very few changes um, were needed, but, you know, effectively between the adult version and, and the children version. Um, and that just goes to show you really that these themes are about building this common understanding, common language um, with each other and indeed our own, with, with ourselves, our own sort of in a, in a monologue, um, you know, it, 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 it crosses the boundaries. Um, so, you know, if parents want do want to get access to that information from, from the website, they can engage with these tasks and topics with their children as well. Um, yeah. So that's, that's very good. That's great, James. Thank yeah, thank you. Just a, a question from me, or actually, it's a, to extend the discussion. Actually, Louise, so this has been you've used this in Guernsey, but this we're the first mainland uh, school that you worked with, and um, it's very exciting actually that we're sort of piloting this in, in the UK. Could you expand on that a little bit, please? Yeah, sorry, yeah, we're from Jersey. Jersey. And do you know what Jersey and Guernsey? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I'm actually originally from Surrey. I'm actually from around your neck of the woods. Um, yeah, so we're from Jersey. We piloted it out uh, with a, a school that had uh, a very varied range of students from some that were just going from good to great, some that were struggling far more. And we also piloted it out in one of our grammar private schools over here. So we did the, the, the two different um, areas. 
both coming back with just um, amazing outcomes, which then forced us to then turn around and go, right, we're doing it on online. And it's gone out to all our secondary schools on the island at the moment. Um, and it, we've literally left, just left it to the schools as to how, when they want to do it, how they want to do it. It's very easy for each school to take it on. Uh, one school's just gone through it. They're now in their second term. They're in their second term and we're getting, again, the same amazing feedback coming through uh, that, you know, it's just a great common language. It enables the students to be able to start talking about very emotional, emotive, vulnerable um, feelings that they have with no vulnerability attached because they've got a language to be able to express it. Uh, and that goes in when you start looking at fires a little bit more. Uh, and I'm sure that everyone that's watching this, once you go through the programme, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. Um, but yes, it's, it, we're very excited that LVS Ascot, you guys have just been brilliant. You're the first school on the mainland that's going through it with us. So, uh, and again, it's just like um, Steve said earlier on, we're here for the long term. We're not here just to drop it off and go, ta-ta, see you later. Uh, we're around the whole time. You know, we'd like to do more. We want to do more. Uh, and I think all, every single one of the directors from the company would turn around and go, it's a little bit of a, a moral thing that we have that sits inside us that our next generation needs to be able to be more resilient. We band the word resilience around a lot, but don't often actually teach them exactly how to be resilient. Uh, and I think that's where we, we're really proud of the skills that we show, that we, we push out there for them, because they are so easy. And I'm going to stress again, sometimes people go, they're really simple. And we go, yeah, that's their beauty, the absolute beauty. They're backed up with science 110%. So don't 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 be put off by the simplicity of them. They work, and as you'll you'll see as it unfolds with the PDFs and everything else on top. I totally agree with you, Louise. Uh, yeah, uh, no, well done, and thank you for that. But you know there are many words that are banded around resilience being one of them, the current buzzword. But it is it's what you do with it. And these two initiatives that we're bringing into school are to give the children those skills because you know I think academically we do we're amazing. I think we, our well-being is fabulous and our co-curricular provision. But having the initiatives like that just sort of give it enrich it. They just give us the tools in which we can make it better for our children and prepare them for the next stage in their lives as well. And these are all the skills that we will carry throughout our lives with us as well. And although at the moment both projects are focused at the earlier years, so years seven, eight, and nine, we are looking at how that then may expand. So we need to move into the junior school. At what stage do we start talking about this? How, how, what, at what age do we do this? What age? Well, I mean, this, it's never too soon to start talking about resilience and also about business skills as well. And then how do we pass it up further up the school as well? So when they get to year 10 and 11 and then into the sick form as well. So it's not something that we're just we're containing to these year groups. This is our starting point because they are new initiatives to us. I think they're quite brave initiatives. I know, um, you know, for us embarking on this has taken a little bit of a, a leap of risk taking there. But, you know, but in, in the right way. And I know that we will develop it and see how we can spread it out across our school community because it is so, so important. So if you do have any questions for Steve or Louise or Laura, James is here as well, or myself, then please send them through. Um, thank you, Louise, and thank you, Steve. So I'm gonna throw up and also, if you've got any general questions about school life, um, there is a, an open event this evening for, if you're in year 11, you want to come see the sick form, come along and, and, and speak with us between 6.30 and 8.30 tonight. If you're thinking about coming into the sick form next year, want to have an initial chat about options and what life in the sick form looks like, or anything in particular, anything about scholarships, anything Think about what's happened in the term and what might be happening in the next half term which no doubt will be extremely busy and um, so if you've got a couple of minutes to start any questions that you want coming through for anyone here today so James and Laura is there anything else that you uh, would like to add today don't rush to speak I'll go first then. Um, no, um, nothing really from, from me. Um, just to say to everyone, really, I hope that you all have a lovely um, and healthy um, half term. And thanks for everyone's support over um, the last uh, half term. And I think, you know, as we've said, these initiatives that we are putting on board is is real testament to the fact that you know we are proud to be LVS Ascot and we do you know push boundaries and we do try new things and we're not afraid to try new things, which is brilliant nation process went okay last week as far as you're aware 
Sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> you thought you were off the hook then, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the vaccination programme went OK last week. All good? Yes, the vaccination process. We got um, all, uh, well, um, lots of year 8s to 11s vaccinated, which was fantastic. Um, and then for anybody that missed the vaccinations through illness, then there is going to be a mop-up process um, after half term. Um, and we'll get more details out to you. And also any year sevens that have currently turned 12 years old already, um, then there will be the potential, um, there'll be a mop-up session after half term um, for those to get vaccinated that wish to get vaccinated as well. And we, we had a, 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 a few uh, positives come in. So we're back to wearing our masks going around the school until the 8th of November. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, so we're back to face coverings in school until after half term, certainly. Um, the um, twice weekly lateral flow testing should still be going on. There is, um, they are reconsidering that over half term, although I don't expect it to change. Um, but yes, if everyone just please uh, keeps the face coverings on in the senior school and on the school transport, um, and then hopefully that will limit the impact that we have on the rest of the school. So um, obviously, as we've mentioned before about our outbreak contingency plans, we do need to just be careful when there are the potentials where clubs or bubbles and things like that. So the, the more that we can take responsibility in doing the twice weekly lateral flows and the face coverings, um, then hopefully the, the less impact it will have on the children's um, school life and lessons and clubs and things like that. That's great. And we've had some lovely comments coming in about the presentations today. So these initiatives are amazing. It's so important to think before reacting. Another one here, love the sound of both these programmes. Looking forward to working through the skills. It would be great to get the year 11s on the resilience training with their exams looming, particularly after what they've been through in the last few years. I think it would be really beneficial. So James, maybe this is something that we could have a chat with and maybe get back to Louise and Emma to be resilient. Maybe there is something that we could do for them this year. Um, it's been a pretty tough couple of years, as we know. And one of our governors is here today as well. So Colin Hayfield is our governor, who sits um, on the main governing bo body and also is the chair of our diversity group as well. So James, your governor is here and he said he thoroughly enjoyed this session. So any more questions or comments coming through? I think we're nearly done. So we're going to give it a 10 seconds, maybe. And while we're waiting to see if we've got any more comments, then we'll be back that the um, LVS Perspectives becomes fast and furious in the second half of the term. We've got so many going on. In fact, on one week, we have two happening in the same week. I think it's the, um, the 22nd and 23rd, but we'll publish those out as well. So some really good topics on diversity, on about sexual harassment and healthy relationships, about drugs and gang crime. I know that's an awful thing to talk about, but it's something we have to talk about, especially with our young people and the dangers of the big wide world out there. We've got one from a counter-terrorism specialist who's going to talk about personal safety and also key issues for schools. So there's some really good programmes coming up after half term. But I'm always here, as you know, if you've got any questions, if you've got any worries, then, then let me know. But I think we're coming to a, a, a close now. So, oh, hang on a minute. So we've got one here. How do we follow these on Twitter, Facebook, etc.? OK, so... What we could do is we can send the details out in an email to all parents following this session. So if Louise and Steve, if we can make sure that we've got all your, your contact details for Twitter, Facebook, etc. Um, and LinkedIn, then we I'll can... I'll send the sure PowerPoint slide, slide over to you, Christine. Okay, one the... All right, brilliant. So we'll get those, those details out to our parents after the session. But on that note, it looks like we're finished. So have a lovely half term. I know we've got another four days of school. Fingers crossed all the COVID things go, go right and we keep ourselves healthy and, ha ha healthy and happy um, and have a lovely two week, two week half term. I hope you're managing to get away somewhere sunny and if not, that you just have a really good rest and we'll see you back in school in November. Okay, take care and thank you very much.